How far would you go for your animal? Just about every pet owner out there strives to keep their furry friend warm and well fed, but realizes there are limits to what they can do. A few others, like Huang Yu, don't let any barriers slow them down. In 2019, one traumatic episode with his beloved pet sent him reeling. Could he ever move on? Well, when he learned of a cutting-edge solution to his misery, he decided he would accept public backlash and chase the controversial option down, no matter the financial or emotional cost. Huang Yu was grateful every day for how much flavor garlic added to his life. Of course, he wasn't talking about the seasoning. Garlic was his two-year-old cat, who quickly became an irreplaceable part of Huang's life. So, when garlic came down with a urinary tract infection, the Beijing man grew increasingly worried. He tried medication for the British short hair, but wasn't sure if it was working. The cat's energy dipped day by day. Tragically, garlic passed away. The grieving owner buried the cat in a nearby park, which unfortunately lacked any pet cemetery abilities to bring back the dead. Huang still refused to let go of his beloved pet, however. A few friends suggested that he adopt a new cat. After all, there was no shortage of felines who needed a good home. But Huang didn't want a replacement, only garlic could fill the hole in his heart. As he staggered listlessly through his life, one news headline stopped Huang cold. Apparently China was vying to become an international leader in cloning technology. Human specimens were still off the table, but scientists were experimenting with other types of mammals. The industry boomed to the point where labs were taking on private clients. This development led Huang to Synergene, which marketed itself as Beijing's premier pet cloning service. Crazy as it sounded, they had a strong track record. Since they began offering this service in 2015, Synergene produced nearly 50 genetic copies of dogs over the years. Their scientists felt confident they'd perfected that process. Still, there was the question of other species. Upon reading this story, Huang's mind instantly turned to his dearly departed garlic. If Synergene had mastered dog replication, would a cat be so different? That matter depended on Huang securing a DNA sample, of course. The complex cloning process required a heftier sample than just some cat fur picked up off the couch. Instead, Huang needed to provide a tissue sample before this wizardry could take place. To get the sample he needed, Huang found himself sweating through a task he never dreamed of doing before. He dug up poor garlic's body from the park. Macabre as it was, recovering these remains were his only hope of getting his cat back. Once the nasty deed was done, Huang stored what was left of garlic in his refrigerator, hopefully in a scent-proof container. With that behind him, the grieving pet owner had an important phone call to make. He reached out to Mi Jidong, the chief executive at Synergene, about cloning garlic. True, the company had never attempted to recreate a cat before. They could barely pass up to such a golden opportunity, however. He asked Huang to bring in the sample. With that, the procedure was underway. Replicating a cat was actually far cheaper than for a dog $35,000 versus $53,000, though Jidong explained that feline cloning was riskier and more complicated. The Synergene scientists began by removing skin cells from garlic. They couldn't use these cells to build a new kitty from scratch, so they injected them into 40 cat eggs. Synergene then implanted these in surrogate mother cats and crossed their fingers that one of the embryos would carry through. Seven months later, their hard work and Huang's thousands of dollars paid off. Synergene produced their first ever feline clone. The kitten appeared normal and healthy. Huang decided to name him Garlic, just like his predecessor. Synergene kept the new garlic under observation for a month. Under the close eye of his surrogate mom, the animal continued to flourish. Huang could take him home soon, though the cat lover did have a few questions. While this garlic was an exact genetic twin of the original, they weren't necessarily the same cat. Slight irregularities popped up. For instance, the first garlic had a signature patch of gray fur right on his chin. However, the clone was missing this detail altogether. Huang didn't let that triviality bother him. After the emotional rollercoaster he endured, he was just relieved to have his loyal companion back. Granted, it wasn't like the new garlic knew who his owner was. Cloning technology can't transplant memories, though Synergene reported that this is a feature they were working on. If this ever becomes possible, pet cloning might very well become an ordinary service. It's already made some waves in the celebrity world. Everybody knew Barbara Streisand as a phenomenal singer and actress, but fewer people were aware that she was an obsessive dog lover. Strangely, this icon might be the best evidence that some people go too far with their pets. 
Streisand's dog, a sweet 14-year-old Cotundu Tulier named Samantha, was a shaggy, white-haired pup who had long been a mainstay in the megastar's life and on her social media feeds. Sadly, in 2017, Samantha passed away. As is the case when anyone loses their beloved pet, this devastated Streisand. It was like losing a child, she recalled. Obviously, she would do practically anything to get her puppy back, if only she could. Eventually, she decided it was time to welcome some new dogs into her home. Yet her social media followers began noticing something strange about these new dogs, they all looked exactly the same. Like, exactly. Turns out, they weren't wrong about the similarities. As Streisand revealed in an interview with Variety, she'd become so attached to her pup during the 14 years they shared together that she chose to do something most would only joke about, she cloned her. The result was two identical dogs named Miss Violet and Miss Scarlet, who were brought into this world in late 2017. While they were mirror images of Samantha physically, there were a few differences. They have different personalities, Streisand explained to reporters, when news of the cloning first broke. I'm waiting for them to get older, so I can see if they have Samantha's brown eyes and seriousness. Genetically, Miss Violet and Miss Scarlet were pretty much twins. In fact, they looked so similar that Streisand dressed them in different clothing, one in lavender and the other in red, hence their names, in order to tell them apart. There was also a third dog, Miss Fanny, whose name referenced the Academy Award-winning actress's role as Fanny Bryce in Funny Girl. While not a clone herself, she was a distant cousin of Samantha's. While cloning an animal might seem like something only possible in a science fiction movie, it's actually a practice that's been around for the past 20 years. The first known animal to be cloned was Dolly the sheep in 1996. Dolly might have been the first cloned animal, but she wasn't the only one. Almost 10 years later in 2005 a team of scientists at Seoul National University in South Korea cloned the first dog, an Afghan hound named Snuffy. Then in 2016, Nubia, a Jack Russell Terrier, became the first dog to be cloned in the United States by the Texas-based company Viagen. Of course, this opened the doors for people like Streisand to have their beloved dogs cloned. Regardless of success rates, cloning a dog is a rather expensive procedure. It makes sense that you only really hear of the wealthiest people doing it. So, how much did cloning Samantha set Streisand back? In recent years, Suum Biotech Research Foundation the South Korean laboratory responsible for successfully cloning upwards of 600 dogs since 2006 charged interested customers a whopping $100,000 to clone their pooches. As of now, Viagen charges $50,000 for dogs and $25,000 for cats, and it's still the only company in the United States that clones pets. This was how Streisand was able to bring Samantha back into the world. Cloning animals will likely become more affordable in the future. Still, some people are opposed to the practice for clear ethical reasons. For instance, author John Westendiek, who wrote the book Dog Incorporated, hopes to stop it before it's too late. Chief among his concerns was that there were plenty of dogs in the world who didn't have homes. One is the sort of philosophical question of whether we really need new ways to make dogs when so many are already being put down in shelters, he explained. Another concern was that it would take multiple animals more than 12 separate dogs in heat to harvest enough egg cells in order to clone just one. Once the cells were collected, they would be implanted into a surrogate who would then carry the pregnancy. In the meantime, celebrities and others who can afford it will likely continue to clone their pets, especially when they reach their twilight years. It's simply their way of dealing with such a devastating loss. And as for Streisand? She seemed content with her choice. Still, since the dogs hadn't turned out to be exactly like her beloved Samantha, she likely had to learn that there were no guarantees when it came to dogs even if they were clones.